El Conde Lucanor, Ejemplo 35. The Count Lucanor, Example 35. The Story of What Happened to a Young Man Who Married a Wealthy and Feisty Woman by Don Juan Manuel. Once again, Count Lucanor spoke with Patronio and told him, Patronio, my servant has told me that he is thinking of marrying a very rich woman who is more honorable than he. There is only one problem, and the problem is this. He has been told that she is the most aggressive and strongest thing in the world. Should I tell him to marry her, knowing how she is, or tell him not to do it? Count, said Petronio, if he is like the son of a certain moor, tell him to marry her, but if he is not, tell him not to. The Count asked Petronio to explain. Petronio told him that in a village there was a man who had the best son he could want. But because they were poor, and the boy could not undertake the great things that he would have liked to do, and in the same village there was another man who was more honorable and richer than the father of this boy, and he only had a daughter, and she was quite the opposite of the boy. While the boy had very good manners, the, gr the girls were quite crude. No one would want to marry that devil wo woman. One day the boy went to his father and told him, that rather than living in poverty or leaving his village, he would prefer to marry such rich woman. His father gave him a cord. So the boy proposed to marry the daughter of that rich man. When the father heard this, he was much astonished and told him that he should not think of such things, and that there was no one, however poor, who would want to marry her. His son only asked him to please arrange the marriage, and he insisted so strongly that finally his father consented although it seemed foolish to him. So he went to see the man, who was a good friend of his, and told him all that had passed between he and his son, and he begged that since his son would dare to marry the rich man's daughter, that he give her to him for his son. When the man heard this, he said, By God, man, if I did such a thing, I would be a very false friend, because you have such a good son. I mustn't allow harm or death to come to him, and I am very sure that if he could marry my daughter, or he could die, death would seem better to him than life. And don't think that I say that so is not to satisfy your desire, because if you want me to, I will give her to your son or to anyone who gets her out of my house. And his friend thanked him much, and as his son did want the marriage, he asked him to arrange it. The wedding took place and the bride was brought to her husband's house. The Moors have a custom of preparing a supper for the new married couple, setting the table for them and leaving them alone in their house until the next day. That is how they did it, but the parents and the relatives of the bride and groom were afraid that the next day they would find the groom dead or badly, bad, badly battered. When the two were alone in the house, they sat at the table, but before the woman said anything, her husband looked about the table and saw a dog, and he said to it angrily, Dog, give me water so I can wash my hands. But the dog didn't do it, and the man began to get angrier and told him more forcefully to give him water for his hands. But the dog didn't do it, and when the man saw that the dog wasn't going to do it, he got up very angrily from the table, took his sword, and went for the dog. When it saw it coming, it fled, and they both jumped over the table and over the fire until the man caught the dog and cut off its head and legs and tore it into two into two pieces and bloodied all the house and all the table and all his clothes and thus very angry and covered in blood he sat down again at the table and looked about now he saw a cat and told it to give him water for his hands and when it did not do it he said traitor did you not see what i did to the dog because he refused to do what i ordered him I swear to God that if you don't do what I order you, I will do the same thing to you as the dog. The cat didn't do it because it is not the custom of dogs or cats to give water for washing the hands. And since it didn't do it, the man got up and took the cat by the legs and smashed it against the wall, breaking it into more than a hundred pieces and getting angrier than he had at the dog. And thus, very wrathful and gesturing ferociously, he returned to sit at the table and looked about the whole house. The woman, who saw him do all that, thought that he was mad and didn't say anything. When the man had looked all about, he saw his horse, 
which was in the house, and which was the only horse he had, and he told it very ferociously to give him water for his hands, but the horse didn't do it. When he saw this, the man said, What? Horse? You think that because I do not have another horse, that I will do nothing? If you don't want to do what I order you to do, be careful, because if you don't do what I order you to do, I swear to God that I will do the same to you as to the others, because I would do the same to whoever doesn't do what I order. The horse didn't move, and when he saw it didn't do what he had told it, he went to it and cut off its head with as much wrath as he could muster and chopped it to pieces. When the woman saw that he killed the only horse he had and said that he would do that to anyone who didn't obey him, she realized that the man was not joking, and she was so afraid that she did not know whether she was dead or alive. And the man, ferocious, angry, and bloody, returned to the table, swearing that if there were a thousand horses in the house and men and women who didn't obey him, that he would kill them all. And he sat down and looked, at all, looked all about, holding the bloody sword in his lap. And after looking in every part of the house, he didn't see any living thing. He turned his eyes to his wife ferociously and said to her with great wrath, that the sword in his hand, Get up and get me some water for my hands. His wife, who was sure that he would chop her to pieces, got up quickly and got him some water for his hands. Oh, thank God you did what I told you, for if you hadn't, with the anger given me by those crazy animals, I would have done the same thing to you as I did to them. Then he told her to give him food, and she did. And always when he said something, he said it in such a tone that she thought he would cut off her head. So past that night, she never spoke and did what he told her to do. And when they had been sleeping only a short while, he said, with the rage I've had tonight, I haven't been able to sleep well. Don't let anyone wake me up in the morning and prepare me a good breakfast. In the morning, the parents and relatives came to the door, and because no one was talking, they thought that the man was dead or wounded. They thought so even more when they saw the woman at the door and not the man. When she saw them at the door, she went over very slowly and fearfully and told them, Are you insane? What have you done? How dare you speak here? Shut up or we'll all die. Upon hearing this, they were surprised, and they esteemed the man highly who commanded his house so well. From then on, his wife was very obedient, and they lived happily. A few days later, the young man's father-in-law wanted to do what he had done, and he killed a rooster in the same way. But his wife said to him, In faith, Don Fulano, you have done this much too late. It would be worthless now if you killed a hundred horses, because we already know each other. And so, said Petronio to the Count, if your servant wishes to marry with such a woman, he must only do it if he is like the man who knew how to tame the ferocious woman and govern his house. The Count accepted Petronio's advice, and all was well. And like Don Juan, like this example, and included in his book, he also composed these verses. If at the beginning you don't show who you are, you will never be able to later when you'd like to.